It doesn't matter if you're designing business cards and brochures or logos for clients, the skills you need to get better just come with time. However, using these in your designs can really help improve the way they look almost overnight. Welcome designers, my name is Mike Pickett. I am a former graphic and web designer who now mainly focuses on vector and logo design and YouTube videos, of course. I've been in the design industry for around 20 years now and I've learned a lot of different things. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at guides. Guides are something that are gonna help you no matter what you're designing. Like I said in the intro, it just doesn't matter. If you're doing business cards, logos, brochures, even websites, guides are a great tool to understand how to use. Now, before we hop over into Illustrator, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the video. I'm sure you're gonna pick something up out of this. I upload new content every Monday and Thursday, including tutorials, tips and tricks in the graphic design industry, and I've got a few other things I'm gonna start throwing in every once in a while. All right, designers, enough about me. Let's hop into Illustrator, and I'll show you everything that I know about guides. All right, designers, here we are in Illustrator. So I went ahead and set up an eight and a half by 11 inch artboard this time, something a little bit different. I'm gonna use a brochure sketch that I made to show you how guides can be helpful in your layouts. So we're gonna start with some settings first. Now we're gonna go to Command K on your keyboard. Uh, if you're on a PC, you're gonna go Control K. That's gonna start us off on our preferences screen in the general tab. We're gonna come down to guides and grid. This is our basic setup for guides. So you can set your color and your style here. Cyan is one of the sort of standard colors that I see a lot of guides in. The other one is magenta. Depending on what I'm working on, I'll change this color. If I'm working on a light background, I normally like to keep it a little bit different. So I'll go with a darker color. If I'm on a darker background, then I'll come back in and actually swap it back into that cyan. So as you can see by clicking on the little thumbnail here or the little swatch, you can pick your own color or you can also come in here and select something else that you wanna go with. So for now, I'm gonna go just magenta. And then lines or dots, you can set this to, and I normally stick with lines. Dots can be nice depending on what you're doing. Again, this is just kind of gonna depend on the situation that you're in. Next, we're gonna go down to smart guides over on the side column. I don't normally change anything in here. Uh, alignment guides, I wanna show object handling, anchor and path, measurement label, space and guide. So I leave those on. You can also do transform tools on this. I normally have these two off. I don't need to see those. I know when I'm doing my angles and when I'm doing my rotations and everything. And then as far as the lines that it's gonna show are 0, 45, 90, and 135. And then our snapping tolerance, once we get to four points within um, shapes and other things like that, it's gonna snap anything under that. And we're just gonna go ahead and click OK. If you have your properties panel open, you're also gonna see a selection for guides here. This is gonna just be sort of quick keys. Now, if you don't know your keyboard shortcuts, this can really help. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's only viewable or only visible when you've got your selection tool going. So for example, if I come over here and grab my rectangle tool, that disappears. So you always need to make sure that you're clicked off of anything. So I can just go command click, but still I'm on this tool, doesn't give me that information. So I would have to go back and hit V on my keyboard or grab my selection tool to get that guides information back again. So learning your keyboard shortcuts is really gonna help in this case. We wanna see the various options that we have available for guides. We can go up to view and then down to guides. We get a little fly out here, so show guides. We have command semicolon unlock guides, alt command semicolon, make guides, command five, and then release guides, alt command five. Clear guides, there's no keyboard shortcut for, but again, if you find that you're using these very often and you want a keyboard shortcut for clear guides, you can just go up to edit and down to keyboard shortcuts. So the very basics of this, you're gonna want your rulers turned on. If you don't have them on or you don't see your rulers, you can hit command R on your keyboard. Command R will toggle your rulers on and off. You're gonna want them on for creating guides. So now that we have our rulers on, I can simply just click and drag down from the ruler section, and that's gonna give me a guide. And I can do the same thing from the left ruler, just click and drag over, and it gives me a guide. Now I have my guides unlocked right now, and that allows me to actually grab them just like any other shape and set them up to where I need to. You can also use your transform tools in the control bar or over in the right hand side column. And you can make adjustments here by just typing in your X and Y axis on where you would like this to show. Transform tools work with your guides. So for example, if I wanted this at a 45 degree angle, I can select it, 
hit R on my keyboard, and then I can go Option, click, let's say right here at the intersection. And as long as I've got preview on, I can see exactly what that's giving me. Hit OK, and now we've got a 45 degree angle guide. So as you can see, this can be really useful for setting up some pretty good layouts. We can use it for structuring documents, laying objects out on your page, or just making sure that things are lined up the way that you want them to be. Let's give an example of that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna delete those two guides and I'm just gonna unlock a sketch that I've got here. And I'm gonna go over to my layers panel, double click on my layer, and I'm gonna turn this into a template layer with 50% image. And that way we can sketch over top of this. So you might be wondering what I just did there. If you wanna learn more about the layers panel, I'm gonna link a card up in the top right now. You can go over and learn all about the layers panel either now or when you're done this video and then you can continue on with a bunch of other tutorials that I've got on the channel. So I've got my basic layout here. So the reason I did this one is because I wanna show you a few different options that we can do to create guides. I'm gonna start with the basics and I've just got a few different sections that I wanna lay out. And if you follow the steps that I just went through, you might end up seeing this little pencil with the sort of no symbol beside it. That's letting you know that you can't actually draw on this layer. And that's because when you turn this into a template layer, it converts it over and locks it. So we're gonna click on the new layer button at the bottom of our layers panel. And now we can start working on our guides. So the first guide I'm gonna make is I'm gonna set up just a border all the way around. And to do that, we're gonna grab our rectangle and you can either click and drag a rectangle out to eight and a half by 11 if you're working on the same size artboard, or you could just click on the artboard, put in your dimensions and then create the rectangle that way. I just went ahead with the drag. Next, what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna offset this because I wanna have a half inch all the way around. So what I'm gonna do up here in the control panel, you can also do it over here. We're gonna take our eight and a half and I'm gonna go minus 0.5 IN and then tab out. And then here I'm gonna do the same thing, go minus 0.5 IN and tab out. And then I have a half inch border all the way around. So this is eight by 10 and a half, which I know the math on that was easy. I could have just done it in my head, but I wanted to show you that you can do the math inside of the blocks if you didn't want to do the math in your head or if you've got something a little bit more difficult than that one so now from here i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to come right down here to this make guides and what that's going to do is it's actually going to convert that into a guide and if you see when i hover over this that's my smart guide showing up telling me the word guide there means that i'm hovering over top of a guide right now so again, if I want to, I can come up to the top, we can come down to guides and I can go lock guides and the keyboard shortcut for that once again is alt command semicolon. So we've got that locked and that's gonna end up being some white space for me. Next, I'm gonna just kind of set up a few different ones here and these ones I'm gonna drag in from my rulers. So I'm gonna set one up there. I'm gonna drag another one down right to here. We're gonna bring another one over from the side. I'm gonna set right there. And I'm gonna bring one more down right here to split these two. And when I'm doing pretty much everything, I start with a sketch. So this is a sketch for a brochure that I'm working on. I have my own kind of little shorthand that I use for the different sections when I block them out. So the L is gonna be the logo. The CB is gonna be a color block. Over here, I've got a text with no block. So this is just gonna be kind of a floating text layer. Here, I've got an eye for image, and then down here is another text, and this one is a text color block. And then in the background, it's gonna be a background image, and G-O-V, it's not government. This is going to have a gray overlay on it. So you can come up with your own methods for doing that, but it just helps me when I'm sketching to kind of conceptualize what I'm doing. Now, the guides are gonna help me lay everything out. So what I can do first is we're actually going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to come over and this is where we start getting into our smart guides. So you can see the word intersect right above my cursor. This tells me that I'm right on the point between the outer guide and this, this guide that's kind of running right across. So that's where I want to be and I'm just going to drag a square out and you see how it snaps? We get that, that's that four point that I was talking about and it just kind of automatically goes down to that bottom and then it's going to do the same thing over here and it snaps in place for me. And that way I can just let go and I've now got my color block. So I can come up and grab a fill color for it. I'm just gonna go with a blue right now just for contrast and pop on the page. 
So next we're going to do this one here. Now, because I've got this color block here, I want a little bit of spacing in this. And there's a couple of different ways I can do it. I could start with creating a text block and then padding the text block, but instead I'm actually gonna use the guides like we've got. So I'm gonna pull a new guide over and I'm just gonna kind of nudge it in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm gonna do one across the top and one across the bottom. Now, if you notice, I didn't get things quite lined up the way that I want them to be. This is where we run into a couple of different options. We can either unlock and then nudge, or I can back up and I can use another rectangle. And so here I'm actually using sort of the edges of my cursor there with the crosshairs to act as the border that I'm gonna use. Let go of that, and then again, I'm gonna right click make guides. And now I can grab my text, come in here, and just pull a text block out. So you can see how this is gonna come together now. And then for the image, let's uh, let's just go real quick here and we're gonna grab an image. So I'm gonna go file, place, and I've actually got, we're gonna use a logo that I did. Let's do my AR logo, uh, let's go AG. I want this mock-up. So I'm gonna place that logo. Now the nice thing about guides as well, so I want this image to lie, oh, this block, so right inside of here. Now it might not be proportionate at this point, but that's fine. I'm just gonna click here, and I'm gonna drag out with my place option still selected, and I wanna drag down until I get to this guide. And then I'm gonna let go. Now I can use my guides again to create a mask. So I know that I'm in between these two, the first thing I want to do is I want to center up with this. I'm going to grab these two, center to my text. And then I'm going to grab another square. And here we're going to create a mask. And I'm just going to use my guides again to drag that square out. And then shift click on my image, right click, and go make clipping mask. And that way everything's all laid out there. So now if I want to hide my guides, I can go command semicolon. And I can also hide this layer back here. And you can see we've got the start of a little brochure that we're gonna be working on. So now you should have a really good understanding of how the guides work. Get out there, put them into practice, start utilizing them in all of your design. Now, if you're just getting started in Illustrator and you wanna understand more about some of the tools that I used in this video, you can find a playlist up here with 20 tools in Adobe Illustrator in 20 days. The series started out 30 tools in 30 days, but I ran out of useful tools to show you. So just never mind some of the stuff that I say in them. Other than the tool information, it's, it's really good. It's great information. You're going to learn something. If you forgot to subscribe at the beginning, you can subscribe right here. All right, designers. I got to get back to work. I'll see you in the next video. Now get out there and design something. I think I need a new light for here, right there. It's C-3PO, I've said it before, you can't tell.